Hey my dear data friends, it's Nikola from Data Mozart. Welcome to another video of Mastering DP500 exam series. This time we will talk about one extremely important feature in Power BI. It's especially important when you're dealing with huge data models. And this feature is called aggregations. Stay tuned! Before we explain how aggregations work in Power BI and take a look at some specific use cases, let's first answer the following questions. Why do we need aggregations in the first place? And what is the benefit of having two tables with identical data in the model? Before we come to clarify these two points, it's important to keep in mind that there are two different types of aggregations in Power BI. Automatic aggregations are one of the newer features in Power BI. With the automatic aggregations feature enabled, you can grab a coffee, sit and relax, as machine learning algorithms will collect the data about the most frequently running queries in your reports and automatically build aggregations to support those queries. User-defined aggregations were up until a few months ago the only aggregation type in Power BI. Here, you are in charge of defining and managing aggregations even though Power BI later automatically identifies aggregations when executing your query. The important distinction between these two types, of course, besides the fact that with automatic aggregations you don't need to do anything except to turn this feature on in your tenant, is licensing limitations. While user-defined aggregations will work with both Premium and Pro, automatic aggregations at this moment require a Premium license. From now on, we will talk about user-defined aggregations only, just keep that in mind. So here is a short explanation of aggregations and the way that they work in Power BI. Here is the scenario. You have a large, very large fact table, which may contain hundreds of millions or even billions of rows. So how do you handle analytical requests over such a huge amount of data? Yeah, you simply create aggregated tables. In reality, it is a very rare situation, or let's say it's more of an exception than a rule, that the analytic requirement is to see the individual transaction or individual record as the lowest level of detail. In most scenarios, you want to perform analysis over summarized data, like how much revenue we had on a specific day, or what was the total sales amount for product A, further how much did customer B spend in total. Additionally, you can aggregate the data over multiple attributes, which is usually the case, and summarize the figures for a specific date, customer or product. If you're wondering what's the point in aggregating the data, well, the final goal is to reduce the number of rows and consequentially reduce the overall data model size by preparing the data in advance. So if I need to see the total sales amount spent by customer A on product B, in the first quarter of the year, I can take advantage of having this data already summarized in advance. So what is the key ingredient with aggregations in Power BI? It's to make Power BI aware of the, ag of the aggregations. So that's one side of the story. Creating aggregations per se is not enough to speed up your Power BI reports. As I said, you need to make Power BI aware of aggregations. Just one remark before we proceed. Aggregation awareness is something that will work only and only if the original fact table uses direct query storage mode. We'll come soon to explain how to design and manage aggregations and how to set the proper storage mode of your tables. At this moment, just keep in mind that the original fact table should be in direct query mode. So let's start building our aggregations. As you may see, our model is fairly simple, consisting of only one single fact table which is online sales and three dimension tables, date, product and store. All tables are currently using direct query storage mode, which can be confirmed if you look at this blue line on the top of each table. Let's go and create two additional tables that we will use as aggregated tables. The first one will group the data on date and product, while the other will use date and store for grouping. So I'll grab my SQL query that I already prepared and let's paste it here in the SQL statement window. So basically, let me quickly show you what I'm doing here is I'm just uh, summarizing my sales amount and uh, sales quantity here, or I will rename this to order quantity. 
to be uh, in uh, to, to align with current setup and this one groups the data on date key and product key okay so this is my first query i will go to transform data and rename this one to sales product aggregated okay let's create another one new query sql server let's connect again to our contoso database again i will paste my query that uh, this time groups data on date and store so instead of product i'm grouping per date and store order quantity that's it okay and let's rename this one to sales uh, uh, store aggregated okay hit close and apply okay so now i have those tables in my those two tables in my data model let's move them here and uh, as we want to get the best possible performance for the majority of our queries and these queries that retrieve data summarized by date and or product or store i will switch the storage mode of this new created aggregated tables from direct query to import so i will go to sales store uh, aggregated and still product aggregated and change their storage mode from direct query to import i get uh, a warning from power bi that once i do this i can't revert it back to direct query but i'm sure that uh, i want to do it that way now these tables are loaded into cache memory but they are still not connected to our existing dimension tables so let's go and create relationships between dimensions and aggregated tables so here i will pull my product key column and create one to many relationship with my aggregated table okay and for stores i will pull my uh, store key column and create one to many relationship with my sales uh, store aggregated table this one should go here and this one should go here okay now the thing i want to show you is uh what happened when we created relationships uh if you recall from our of, uh, from one of our previous videos i mentioned that there are two types of relationships in power bi regular and limited and this is important uh, whenever there is a relationship between the tables from different source groups so import mode is one source group and direct query is another you will have a limited relationship as you can see here with all its limitations and constraints but i have good news for you if i switch the storage mode of my dimension tables to dual that means that they will be also loaded into cache memory and depending on which fact table provides the data at the query time dimension table will behave either as import mode so if the query targets import mode fact tables or direct query if the query retrieves the data from the original fact table in direct query so let's change uh, storage mode of uh, our dimension tables date store and product i'll go to advanced and instead of direct query i'll change this to dual mode now it will take some time for power bi to load the data yeah it was fast and you can recognize that the table is in dual mode once you see this dashed blue line on the top of the table name so we see that date product and store are now in dual mode uh, so to wrap up our model is configured as follows uh, our original online sales table uh, with all the detailed data is in direct query storage mode our dimension tables so date product and store are in dual mode while our aggregated tables uh, sales product aggregated and sales store aggregated are in import mode that's awesome now we have our aggregated tables and our queries should run faster right babe wrong so let me show you how this looks like in reality i have a table visual that contains uh calendar year brand name sales amount and order quantity so to be able what is going on here i will turn on performance analyzer and start recording okay so let's go and refresh this visual and if i expand this table here you see that direct query was uh applied direct query was run and this 
uh, visual took almost, let's say, two seconds to render. So almost two seconds. Table visual contains exactly those columns that we pre-aggregated in our sales product aggregated table. So why on earth does Power BI runs a direct query instead of getting the data from the imported table? That's a fair question. But remember when I told you in the beginning that we need to make Power BI aware of the aggregated table so it can be used in the queries. So let's go uh, back to Power BI desktop and do this. So I will go again to a model view and for my sales product uh, aggregated table, I will right click on it and select manage aggregations. Fine. A uh, few important remarks here. Uh, in order for aggregations to work, data types between the columns from the original fact table and aggregated table must match. So if I try to create, for example, here a uh, sales amount, I'll use sum and from online sales and you see that sales amount is not an option here. It's grayed out because uh, the data type is different in my aggregated table. So I will go to uh, my sales uh, product aggregated table and change the data type from decimal number to fixed decimal number. So data types must match. Let's go again here to our sales product aggregated table, manage aggregations. Now, if I go to sum and online sales, I should be able to see my sales amount and for order quantity, let's also do a sum from online sales and uh, okay, it's a sales quantity. So uh, you see the message written in red. That means once you create an aggregated table, it will be hidden from the end user. So I will apply all and let's apply the same steps for our sales store aggregated table. Again, manage aggregations, sales amount from online sales and okay, yeah, I need to change it. I forgot to change also in, the, in another one. So from decimal number, fixed decimal number, yes. Let's go back now to sales store aggregated, manage aggregations. So we are doing sum of sales amount and we are doing sum of sales quantity. Apply all. Now you see that those two tables are hidden in data model. So let's go and check if something changed uh, here in our uh, visual. Let's go back now and refresh our report page to see if something changed. So I will click refresh visuals and you see if I expand this that there is no direct query anymore. And instead of almost two seconds needed to render this visual, this time it took only 68 milliseconds. So let's copy this query and go to Deck Studio. I want to show you something. So we need to check this query in Deck Studio. I'll clear cache and run. So before that, I forgot to turn on server timings. Let's again hit clear cache and run. And if we go to server timings, you see that this uh, row says match found, which means that aggregation succeed. So Power BI was able to pull the data from aggregated table. And it says match found and the original table was online sales, but it was mapped to sales product aggregated table. Uh, so even though our user doesn't have a clue that this table even exists in the model, Power BI was clever enough to pull the data from it. And the difference in performance, even on this relatively small data set, is huge. Now you're probably wondering why I've created two different aggregated tables. Well, let's say that I have a query that displays the data for various stores, also grouped by uh, date dimension. Instead of having to scan 12.6 uh, million rows in direct query mode, the engine can easily serve the numbers from the cache, from the table that has just a few thousand rows. Essentially, you can create multiple aggregated tables in the data model, not just combining two grouping attributes, like we had here with date plus product or date plus store, but also including additional attributes, for example, including date and both product and store in the one aggregated table. 
This way, you will increase the granularity of the table. But in case that your visual needs to display the numbers both for product and store, you will be able to retrieve results from the cache only. Uh, in our example, as I don't have pre-aggregated data on the level that includes both product and store, let's say that I want to include a store in the table. So I will go to my store dimension and let's find store name and put it here. Uh, before that, let me clear uh, performance analyzer and I'll insert store name. So you see that it takes a while and uh, we'll see how long it will take. So seven seconds to render. And if I expand this again, direct query was run. Uh, so I'm losing the benefit of having aggregated tables. So in order to leverage aggregations, you need to have them defined on the exact same level of grain as the visual requires. There is one more important property to understand when working with aggregations in Power BI, and that's prece uh, precedence. Uh, when the manage aggregation dialog box opens, so let me show you here. Uh, there is this uh, uh, aggregation precedence option on the top. And uh, this value instructs Power BI on which aggregated table to use in case the query can be satisfied from multiple different aggregations. By default, it's set to zero, but you can change the value. Uh, the higher the number, the higher the precedence of that aggregation. Why is this important? Well, think of a scenario where you have the main fact table with billion of rows and you create multiple aggregated tables on different grains. For example, aggregated table one groups data only on date level and has, let's say around 2000 rows, five years of dates. Then aggregated table two groups data on date and product level, which has 100,000 rows. So it's five years of dates uh, multiplied by 50 products. Then aggregated table number three groups data on date, product and store level and it has around 5 million rows. So it's 100,000 from the previous grain multiplied by 50 different stores. Now, let's say that the report visual displays aggregated data on the date level only. What do you think? Is it better to scan table one with 2000 rows or table three with 5 million rows? I believe you know the answer. In theory, the query can be satisfied from both tables. So why rely on the arbitrary choice of Power BI? Instead, when you are creating multiple aggregated tables with different levels of granularity, make sure to set the precedence value in a way that tables with lower granularity get priority. That's all folks. If you enjoyed this video, please consider liking it. Of course, you can also subscribe to Data Mozart channel if you hit that subscribe button down below. Additionally, if you want to book a full training on preparing mastering DP500 exam, make sure to check the link in the description of this video. See you soon.